What's going on my friends? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today I've got some more confusing code terms that I'm gonna go over with y'all. So first on our list is a branch circuit. Branch circuit simply means that uh, all of the conductors from the last overcurrent device all the way to the outlet that is being used for a piece of equipment. It can be a lighting outlet, it can be a receptacle outlet, but it's talking about the conductors from the breaker to the, the device that power is being taken out of. So branch circuit conductors are pretty much everything at the end of an electrical system. So you have your service, then you've got all of your panels, you've got all this other equipment, and then at the very last panel, you've got all of these circuits that come out of it and go to devices. Those are all branch circuits. You could also have several panels that have their own branch circuits, but it's basically the from the, the point of the last circuit breaker out to a device somewhere or an outlet that is considered the branch circuit. Everything before that is a feeder up until you get back to the service, and then from the service on, those are service entrance conductors. Number two, multi-wire branch circuit. Multi-wire branch circuit's pretty much the same thing as a branch circuit, with the exception that uh, within the same raceway or the same uh, cable assembly, you have multiple ungrounded conductors or multiple HOTs. Um, that all share one neutral or one grounded conductor. Um, all of the ungrounded conductors have to have uh, the same voltage from one ungrounded conductor to the grounded conductor, meaning between hot and neutral. For instance, you have to have 120 between one hot and neutral, 120 between another hot and neutral, and if you get three hots, 120 between them. Um, so that's the stipulation for a multi-wire branch circuit. The benefit of something like this is that instead of having to run two pieces of 12-2, so you have a hot neutral, hot neutral, running two different runs to the same piece of equipment, you can run one run that has two hots and a neutral inside of it, all in one drop. Okay, the next one is feeders. Now feeders, a lot of people get confused on what this is. Feeders are not branch circuit conductors, and they're not service entrance conductors. Service entrance is at the beginning to the service, Branch circuit is at the last panel, the final overcurrent device. From there on out, it branches out to devices. There's no other panel or breaker after that. Literally everything in between that is feeders. So feeders can come from a service panel, you know, a breaker, leave, go up into another disconnect, leave that disconnect, can go into a transformer. It's all still feeders at this point, can leave a transformer and then go to another panel. All of that is feeders from that first overcurrent device at the service to the last overcurrent device at the last panel. Everything in between that is feeders. Number four, service entrance conductors. Now a lot of people have a uh, hard time with feeders and service entrance conductors and they kind of call one the same thing and they don't know what the difference is. Service entrance conductors are actually talking about outside at the service from the service drop or the service point the point at which the utility hooks up to the service, the wires that hook up at that point and come down into the service and terminate at the first disconnecting means, meaning your main breaker at your service. Those wires are called the service entrance wires. Number five is grounding electrode. A grounding electrode is a purposeful piece of conducting material that is installed into the ground to establish a, uh, an equipotential bond, essentially, with the ground. It's bringing the earth to the same potential as the grounding conductors and the grounded conductor that are in the service. So a lot of times, some people will put like a rod, a ground rod. They'll hammer that thing into the ground and they'll bring a conductor from it and put it up into the service panel. And that brings the earth's potential to the same as the equipment grounding conductors and the grounded conductor or the neutral. This doesn't always have to be a rod. Some people have like big plates that they put in the ground. Um, some people use like water piping. I mean, there's all kinds of different things that you can use for a grounding electrode depending on the circumstance and where you're at and what you're doing. Number six is an overload. So 
Overload just means that you are using a piece of equipment in excess of its rating. So you have a 20 amp piece of equipment and for some reason that thing is bound up and it's drawing a lot more current than it should be and it's like running at 25 or 30 amps. Um, this is why breakers become really important because certain conductors can only handle a certain amount of heat and a certain amount of current going through them before they get really hot and start melting the insulation. So overload just means that the equipment itself is overloaded. Some things bind up, like uh, you might have a motor that has bad bearings in it or that like is, you know, is like stuck on something and it's trying to spin. It's still making a complete circuit, but because it's not spinning, it's bound up, which means it's allowing more current to go a lot quicker. So that is an overload. Number seven, overcurrent. So a lot of people confuse overload and overcurrent. They kind of are similar um, and they're usually referring to the same situation happening. Overload means that the piece of equipment is, over, is overloaded. It's the event that's happening to cause that piece of equipment to run in excess of its uh, rating. But overcurrent is talking about what's actually going on inside the wires, the electrical portion of that. So it's any current that's in excess of the rating of that equipment. The overload is basically running the equipment, utilizing it in excess of its rating, but overcurrent is talking about the amount of current going through the wires at that same time for that kind of event. So we call breakers and fuses overcurrent protection devices. Um, and then there are overloads for like motors and things like that. Uh, they're two completely different things, but they both relate to each other. And one thing that might help to think about is an overload situation, an event, can cause overcurrent. It can cause too much current to flow. But an overcurrent cannot cause an overload. Number eight is a continuous load. Continuous loads are really important to pay attention to. Uh, a continuous load is a load, piece of equipment, something that's gonna be running that is operating for three or more hours without shutting off. Um, it's really important to know that equipment is going to do that because the conductors can actually overheat. You can start breaking down insulation. So you have to upsize your conductors. There's different um, things for breakers and fuses and conductors that continuous loads come into play on. Uh, but just know it's anything more than three hours. Number nine on our list is a raceway. So a raceway generally just means a piece of conduit or tubing. It's, uh, it can be a gutter, like a metal box that has a removable cover, but it's anything that is uh, like an enclosed channel of some sort that is specifically designed to hold conductors or cables or bus bars. So, uh, you know, metal gutters that you have a removable cover, you're bringing conductors through that. You can even put little bus bars inside of them. That is a raceway, a piece of EMT conduit. You can run conductors through it. That is a raceway. There are some enclosures that classify as raceways and some that you cannot use as raceways. There's places where you can't use an electrical panel uh, for a raceway. But uh, anything really that houses, that's specifically designed to house cables, conductors, or uh, bus bars is a raceway. Number 10, this one used to confuse the shit out of me, utilization equipment. Utilization equipment is really just equipment that is meant to be utilized, like it's that simple. So a vacuum cleaner, well, I'm utilizing this piece of equipment when I'm vacuuming. It's a utilization equipment. Um, it's really like any equipment that utilizes electricity to work. And last, number 11 is disconnecting means. So disconnecting means uh, basically is just a way to take a load, some piece of equipment, and disconnect the conductors that are feeding it from power. So basically a light switch is a, dis a disconnecting means for the light bulb. Light bulb has conductors going to it, you turn that switch off, now those conductors don't have any more current on them. So disconnecting means applies to a lot of things. You're gonna see disconnecting means all over the code book in every piece of equipment, every environment, there's specific things that matter with the dis disconnecting means. But the main disconnect out at your service that shuts your whole entire building off, that is a disconnecting means. The furnace, the little switch that you have, if you have a gas furnace, that 110 switch, 
That's a disconnecting means. If you have an electric furnace and you got huge wires going to it and you've got that big, huge disconnect, that's a disconnecting means. So anything that is going to disconnect the conductors that are feeding a load so that they don't have power on them anymore, that is a disconnecting means. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you didn't catch the first one of these, uh, click up here. There's a little card that you can uh, watch the first episode. A lot of people found that really useful. I'm going to keep doing these. Um, so hopefully next week I can come out with a terms part three and maybe if I'm feeling gangster terms part four, but I love you people. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Thank you.